is in free fall. Just like an apple, the moon is constantly falling toward the earth. It doesn't hit the earth because it spins around the earth and the earth is round, but it's acting under a force, a force of gravity. So Newton immediately tried to work out the mathematics, and he realized that the mathematics of the 1600s was not sufficient to work out the motion of a falling moon. So what did Isaac Newton do? When he was 23 years old, not only did he stumble upon the force of gravity, but he also created calculus. In fact, he created calculus at the rate at which you learn it when you're a freshman in college. And why did he create calculus? To calculate the motion of a falling moon. The mathematics of his age was incapable of calculating the trajectories of objects moving under an inverse square force field. And that's what Isaac Newton did. He worked out the motion of the moon. And then he realized that if he understands the moon, he also understands the motion of the planets in the solar system. And Isaac Newton invented a new telescope. It was the reflecting telescope, and he was tracking the motion of this comet. Well, it turns out that everyone was talking about the comet, including a rather wealthy Englishman by the name of Edmund Haley. So Edmund Haley, being a wealthy merchant, decided to make a trip to Cambridge to talk to England's illustrious scientist, Sir Isaac Newton. Well, Edmund Haley asked Newton, what do you make of this comet? No one understands comets. They're a mystery. They've been fascinating people for centuries, for millennia. What are your thoughts? And then I paraphrase, but Isaac Newton said something like this. He said, oh, that's easy. That comet is moving in a perfect ellipse. It's moving in, a, in an inverse square force field. I've been tracking it every day with my reflecting telescope, and the path of that comet conforms to my mathematics exactly. And of course, we don't know what Edmund Haley's reaction was, but I paraphrase. He must have said something like this. For God's sake, man, why don't you publish the greatest work in all of scientific history? If correct, you have decoded the secret of the stars, the secret of the heavens. Nobody understands where comets come from. And then Newton responded and said, oh, well, it costs too much. I mean, I'm not a wealthy man. It would cost too much to summarize this calculus that I've invented. And 